Hello, hello, hello everyone and thank you for watching another one of my videos. Today I'm going to show off a fat ass leopard moth that came from Africa. I've been breeding this in captivity and completed its entire life cycle. Currently we are looking at a female and the species is the Gelada imitans. That's the scientific name. Unfortunately this species has no common name in English. Its distribution in Africa is Angola, Cameroon, Congo, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Nigeria, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda and possibly more countries where it hasn't been recorded yet. Now these gelada imitants seem to be very polyphagous. In the wild they've been recorded on Indian almond tree, a scientific name Terminalia catapa. But in captivity it turns out they were willing to eat a lot more, including oak tree, quercus and cherry prunus, which made them somewhat easy to raise with very few losses. It was a very strong species in captivity. Now this beautiful fall and fat female that we are currently looking at is um, very big and heavy. She can lay a few hundred eggs if she wants to, uh, if she is fertilized. And she is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. Uh, these moths are never really very colorful, but that doesn't matter. I can appreciate their shape, their patterns. So um, she has a very wonderful stripe that runs over her body. But this female here is interesting, but what's also interesting is the male. Let me show you. This is a male of the same species, the Gelada imitans. Now what's interesting is the male is uh, a lot more smaller. Uh, in fact, he is less than half the size of a female. And interestingly, his abdomen is very long. They have very elongated segments. And what's interesting is if they are disturbed, they will even curl up their abdomen and take a defensive position. These guys seem to do a little bit of uh, funky stuff with their abdomens. Its uh, slenderness and shape reminds me a little bit of a hawk moth, the Sphingidae. But uh, of course it's only very superficial. Uh, it's not strange for, for leopard moths to look like this. But uh, just saying. Anyway, if they're disturbed they will flap their wings wildly and uh, flop over the floor. But then if they are sitting still, they can be quite well camouflaged because of their brown stripes on the rings. Overall, it's a really wonderful species. Let me show you the pupa and cocoon as well for a very short time. Pupa is hairy. Last but not least, the caterpillars are really what's wonderful about this moth. I've seen a lot of caterpillars in my life. And so have you if you watch my YouTube channel because I've shown you hundreds of species over the last few years. But these guys really take the cake because they are so extremely variable. Um, all of them are hairy, but I've, sound, I've seen almost white caterpillars, almost green caterpillars, brown ones, grey ones. And there seem to be so many color forms that it would really amazed me how well camouflaged these guys were. It was very easy to raise them. I think I had almost zero losses. So. Um, the only downside is they take a long time to grow, several months, which is not unusual for leopard moths. They are a little bit slow, and if you want to be a leopard moth breeder, you need to be very patient. Other than that, I had uh, very few problems. They also have some very hidden sharp spines on their thoracical segments that they can use out to uh, lash and attack. These spines feel a little bit like splinters. It will get stuck in your fingers. But, uh, that's not really a problem unless you plan on cuddling your caterpillars all the time. So if you keep contact to a minimum and just don't touch them, you're not going to be affected by them. Overall, it's really a lovely species. And very little is known about the life histories of leopard moths in Africa. So um, I'm really glad that I was able to breed it. Because every time you breed these leopard moths, you're discovering something new that other people have never seen before. Uh, there's, very, there's a lot of species in Africa and very little people are studying them right now. So that makes videos like this and uh, experiences with breeding them very valuable. Because it's faunistic knowledge that's not easily accessible otherwise. The specimens in this video came from the country of Cameroon and were sent to me as eggs. Thank you for watching my channel. Please don't forget to like my video to subscribe 
and read the links that I put for you in the description. Thank you and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye bye.